This is such a fun seasonal project that's really quick, works great for gifts or for your own home decor. Um, I wanna show you how to make this cute little pumpkin that you fill with these coasters and they just pop in and out of there when you wanna use them. So it's functional, but also really nice for home decor to have. I really do think this would be a stunning gift to give a teacher or a friend, especially in the back to school fall or even just for fun. So to get started, we wanna make sure we have the right supplies. Today, I will be using worsted weight yarn. This is Starlet by Mary Maxim. You, I'm going to be using this color on camera to create the pumpkin today. I've created a couple other colors as well. It's really fun to mix and match. We're gonna be using a really fun technique where we're going to use three strands at once for the pumpkin portion of this, but we are going to be doing that from working from one ball. So that's exciting. I'll show you how to do that. And for the pumpkin, you're going to want a nine millimeter, so a pretty big crochet hook to create the pumpkin part of this. For the leaf, we're going to use an H five millimeter hook to create this leaf. And I'll be using this green color, but once again, feel free to use whatever colors you want. And this will be a one strand project. You will also want to have a pair of scissors around, um, a tapestry needle to weave in those ends, and stitch markers are always a good idea when approaching a new project. So let's go ahead and get started. Now to get started in making the leaf, we're going to start with a magic circle. And I have a tutorial on this if you would like to learn to make it. And I still like to chain one, but our first stitch in this magic circle is going to be a stacked single crochet. And that's what we're going to start by creating a single crochet but we're not done. We're going to go ahead and enter into this left horizontal bar, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. This is our very first stitch and I highly recommend marking the top of it because it's easy to mistake this side stitch as a stitch, but it just makes it look better. It's a better way to start than just chaining when it comes to a half double crochet or double crochet stitch. And now we're going to continue by doing 11 more double crochet stitches into this magic circle. So we will have a total of 12 stitches for our very first round. Now we're going to go ahead and take this tail end and pull that magic circle closed. And you can pull this one tight. And then we're going to start by moving our stitch marker. You can join with a slip stitch or sometimes you can go right into the next stitch, which is a stacked single crochet. Sometimes I like to join with a slip stitch if it makes it a little bit tighter and cleaner. I'm gonna pull that magic circle closed. And in this very first stitch, we're going to be doing a stacked single crochet to start this round. And then mark the very first stitch of the round. And now we're going to chain one. In the next stitch, we're going to do a double crochet and a chain one. And we're gonna keep repeating that all the way around. So we'll do a double crochet and a chain one. We are increasing our stitches because the chain ones do count. So we're going from 24 stitches, or from 12 stitches to 24 stitches after round two. So we're simply going to double crochet and chain one into each stitch around. Now your piece might curl in a little bit here and that's fine. It really evens out. It, it, this curl gets evened out as we work into the chain spaces onto the next round. Now, after completing round two, we're going to move our marker. We can slip stitch to join. And then for round three, we're going to start by doing a stacked single crochet into the very first stitch and then mark it. And then we're going to do two double crochet stitches into the next chain space. And now we're going to do this next segment four times. So what we'll do is we'll double crochet into the next and then two double crochet into the chain space. And we'll do that for a total of four times. So that was one 
and we'll double crochet into the next and two double crochet into the chain space. And that's two. Then we'll double crochet into the next and two double crochet into the chain space. And that's three. And then we'll double crochet into the next and two double crochet into the chain space. And that is four times. Then we are going to chain one, skip the next double crochet stitch, and in the next chain two space, we are going to double crochet two, chain two, and double crochet two. All that has worked into that next chain space. That's what's going to help us get a little bit of a point on this leaf. Then we're going to chain one and skip the next double crochet stitch. And then we are going to do two double crochets into the next chain space and double crochet one. And we're going to do that five times. So we'll do another two double crochet into the next chain space and double crochet one. That's two times and then double crochet two into the next chain space and double crochet one three times. There's four times. And here's five times working that two double crochet into the chain space and double crocheting in the next. And we have one chain space left and we will do two double crochet stitches into that chain space to end this round. So now all we have left for this is round four and the stem. So what we're going to do for round four is we're not actually going to join. We're going to go right into this first stitch, but we are going to be working in what is called the third loop or the horizontal bar on the back of the stitch. So we're going to rotate our work forward here and we see where our stitch marker is, it marks this stitch, but behind the stitch we find a horizontal bar that is we, the third loop essentially because you got your front loop, your back loop, and then the third loop. So we're going to move our stitch marker and we are going to single crochet into that third loop and then mark our stitch. And now we are going to single crochet 18 into that third loop. And what this does is it turns our stitches so we can see the, the top of our stitches roll forward and it creates a nice edging effect for this. Now when we get to the chain space, we still want to work towards the third loop, which is the bottom hump of the stitch. So we're leaving the top ones still facing forward. And then we'll continue to complete those 18. And now as we get to this chain two space, we are going to do a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet all into that chain two space. And then we're going to go right back into working in that third loop for the remaining 20 stitches. And once again, when you get to the chain stitch, we're just going to work the bottom hump of that. And that way it still rolls that stitch, the top of that stitch forward. So we're going to single crochet in the third loop all the way to the end of this round. Now that we have worked to the end of the round, we are going to go ahead and go right into creating the stem of this. So what we will do is we'll chain 21. After chaining 21, I do like to work in the bottom humps of these chains, but we're going to single crochet two stitches into the second chain from the hook. And then we are going to continue to single crochet two stitches into every chain stitch all the way down. So we'll be doing a total of 40 single crochet stitches here. By working two stitches into each chain stitch, that creates that little loop-de-loop, -loop, the curly part of these coasters. 
it just curls it around for us nicely. So single crochet into each chain stitch twice and work that all the way down. So a total of 40 single crochet stitches. You can already see that this is starting to curl on me. So just keep on going and let that curl. And now that I've worked all the way down those chain stitches, I can go ahead and I kind of like to work on the back of this to make it less conspicuous, but I'm just going to slip stitch to join. And then we can fasten off and weave in our ends. Now you'll want to make at least four of these for every single pumpkin, but if you want to have six coasters, that works as well. You can really stuff your pumpkin um, full of coasters and blocking them is nice, but I, they sit pretty well on their own. And then it's just simply kind of fold them in half and then stick them inside this pumpkin. The nice thing is they help shape the pumpkin to look really full and curl down on the sides. Next, we're going to talk about how to create the base pumpkin for these cute little coasters. Now, these pumpkins are made using three strands of yarn, but don't worry, we can work it from one ball, and I'm going to show you how. But this is made in rows and then joined and flipped so that it's really firm and sits where it is. You can see the bottom curls in because of the way that we make it. And um, it works really great so that it is a bit more firm and sturdy for us to um, stuff it and have it hold its shape with or without um, the coaster leaves in it. So we're going to go ahead and get started on making the rows of this pumpkin. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is take your yarn and we're going to create an S. So this is an S shape. And then we're going to just simply grab that and pinch it together. This will be what we do to create the beginning knot. So you'll want to create a, a slip knot and then place that onto your hook. I'm leaving a little bit of a tail end because I'll want it to sew the bottom of the pumpkin closed. Then on this part, this open um, loop, we're going to grab the yarn and pull it and we'll keep pulling it and pulling it until we're comfortable with the length to work for a while and now you can see that we have three strands that we're working from when we run out of yarn that's the process we will do each time so we'll simply go through the loop and pull more yarn but let's get started in creating our chains for the rows so to start this we're going to start with creating 16 chains Notice before I'm even done creating my chains, I've run out of, of three strands of yarn. So I simply grab it and pull through again. Now you can pull this as long as you want. You can pull it for quite some length. Just don't do too much that it gets tangled, but you can give yourself a lot of space to work with before you need to do it again. But you can do this as many times as you need and it works out. Just It's just creating more length of three stranded yarn. And then we'll simply work from this. Now that I have 16 chains, we are going to go ahead and we're going to start by working into the second chain from the hook in the back loop only, and we're going to uh, single crochet for 10. So we're going to start in the second chain from the hook and single crochet one, and then we're going to single crochet until we have 10 single crochet stitches. Now, if you would like, mark the first stitch of the row because it's good to keep track of when we're, when we're working in rows. Now, after doing a total of 10 single crochet stitches, we are going to slip stitch in the back loop only for the last five. Now, after slip stitching five, we are going to turn our work. And the next two rows will be our repeat rows. So we're going to chain one 
And working in the back loop only, we're going to slip stitch into the first five. And if you want, go ahead and mark the very first stitch of this row so that you don't have to worry about getting off on your stitch count. So we'll slip stitch five. And then we're going to single crochet in the last 10 stitches of this row in the back loop only. And notice when I get to the point where I have run out of the three strands of yarn, we simply just grab that loop and pull it. And then we can keep on going. Now, if you want a little bit of straighter edges in the first and the last stitch, you can single crochet through both loops just to give the edges a little bit of a neater look. But for this pattern, it doesn't make a huge difference. I tend to do it by habit. And now after working this row, row two, we're going to turn to do row three. And row two and three, these are our repeat rows. So now we're just simply going to be working the same as the stitches from the row below. I've chained one and you can either work through both loops for the first stitch or through just the back loop only. And we're gonna mark that first stitch. And for the first 10 stitches, we're just working those single crochet stitches in that back loop. Now for the last five stitches of this row, we are going to slip stitch those stitches in the back loop only. And in the last stitch, if you wanna work it through both loops, you can just to make it a little bit cleaner. And then we're going to turn our work and chain one. And we're going to keep repeating rows two through three. You'll notice that one side is tighter where we're doing the slip stitches and then we've got our single crochet stitches. Um, we're going to keep repeating rows two and three until we have a total of 25 rows for this. So it's just going to be a flat piece. Um, just keep working the rows two through three and then come on back. Now that we have done 25 rows, we're going to go ahead and take this piece and we're going to be joining it together. So what we will do is we will fold our current row towards our very first row. We're going to ignore these strands here. They're just simply going to sit because we're going to use those a little bit later. But you can go ahead and chain one to make this a little bit easier to get started. And we're going to go through the back loop only of our current row. And then we are going to grab the loop from the first stitch of the first row that we did. And then we will yarn over and slip stitch that together. So we'll go through the back loop of our current row through the loop on our very first row, making sure that we're going through all three strands and then yarn over and slip stitch. And we will be doing this for the entire row here to join together. We're going to be slip stitching all the way across here. And now we have joined one side of this and it's time for us to work around the top. So we want the top to pull in a little bit. So we're going to be slip stitching around the top, but instead of slip stitching uh, one stitch per row, because I have 24 rows here, we're going to do one stitch per every two rows about. So I end up with about 13 stitches because we've got that extra row. So we are going to go in the middle, kind of like that divot, of each row and do a slip stitch. So this is our first one. And then I'm gonna move over to here and do my second slip stitch. And then here, so we're going kind of going in that ridge that, that goes inward. And we're just gonna slip stitch every single time we get to that, that ridge. And that will help pull the top of this in to be more like a pumpkin.
and then one more here and then we can fasten off and do an invisible join if you would like now you can take all three strands and put them into a yarn needle which is why you'll want a pretty decent sized yarn needle you can work these strands individually if you would like but I find it really simple just to use all three at once. Now what I like to do to finish off the top of this is this is our very first stitch here and I'm going to go through it as if I were going to single crochet it, but I'm going through both of those loops with my yarn needle and I'm going to pull that tight. And now I'm going to go back down the center of my last stitch worked and pull that tight and this creates like a mock stitch on the top here so you can't really tell where we started and stopped with doing those um, stitches around the top and then we will simply weave in our ends and fasten off and now we're going to come back to this bottom part where we started and we can place our tail end onto our yarn needle Now this is where we're going to be sewing this shut. We're going to seam this close. So I like to go through the points of each row about um, and weave through and then I'll tighten those down once I get all the way around. So I'm just weaving through all the way around the edge of this for the bottom. And you can tell as we start to pull this, it will close this to um, be a nice bottom. And now that I've woven this through all the way around, we can simply pull it tight and adjust as you go a bit, but pull it all the way tight until that is mostly closed. It's not really going to matter if you still have a hole, but what you can do is you can pull it tight and then weave around again to close it even further and to secure this end um, so that it doesn't come undone. So I'm going to weave this through. I'm going to go back and forth and we'll close this um, bottom opening. And now we can fasten off. I like to pull it through and fasten off on the inside. And then when we take our bottom here and we kind of flip it up in, so we're kind of just pushing it, it really helps hold the shape. So we can push our pumpkin out on the sides and then kind of push the top towards the center. And now we have a nice little pumpkin to place our coaster leaves into. And you can make four or six of these and simply stick them inside. And then when guests come over, you will have coasters for to protect your furniture or if you have a hot drink you don't want to set that on a side table it, this is such a cute way to have coasters around but also a bit of fall or halloween decor so you can make these in any color you want and it's really cute and fun Thank you for joining me today for this fun pumpkin coaster tutorial. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for some more fun projects soon.